welcome i'm anna from craft me a card and i love crafting for the crafter and that is you thank you so very much for joining me i come to you today as part of a collaboration called sunshine is my favorite color stephanie over at nc mountain mama has invited us to share a project working with sunflowers we're a total of 10 collaborators and i encourage you to check all channels out for chances to win giveaways Please make sure you subscribe to all channels and please do not unsubscribe. It hurts our feelings. <laughs> Thank you so very much, Stephanie, for always inspiring us and getting our creative minds working. You will see a list of all the collaborators and channels down in the description box below. Okay, so I'll go quickly over what I plan on using. Um, and I want to use some of this coffee dyed paper that I make. And I've been using it quite a bit lately, so I just want to go over really quickly how I make it. I want to use this punch that I think is perfect for this stamp that says, if friends were like flowers, I'd pick you. And it's perfect, especially because it has a sunflower, so I thought it would be perfect for this project. And of course, I bring out my sunflowers box where I have different kinds of flowers that look like sunflowers. And I pick one out of this box. Now, if you're new to my channel, I just want to give you a heads up that I'm enjoying tremendously working with pressed dried flowers. Now, these are real flowers and I started pressing them not too long ago and I have created myself a nice collection of pressed flowers and I'll put a link here for you in case you would like to see how I started pressing flowers and I'm using them on most of my projects now. They make a beautiful and gorgeous addition to any project and um, I go ahead and I pick one out of this box. I also want to use paper from this paper pad. This is from the paper studio. It's found at Hobby Lobby. I just really like how these papers have a distressed and a vintagey feel to them. So I thought it would be perfect for this project. Next, I bring in the sunflower here. I just want to see which design looks more appealing to my eyes. <laughs> Putting the sunflower on top of them, I go through different pages and I decide for this one that's a little minty blue and I think this is a great contrast with the flower, so I pick this one. Okay, let's get started on this coffee dyed wood-like paper. So this is just regular coffee, it's instant coffee, and I just dilute it with some water. The darker you want the tint to be, of course, you add less water. The lighter you want the tint to be, you add more water. And I am working on poster board here. This is the kind that you find at the Dollar Tree. It has a slicker finish, so it holds the coffee a little bit better, and it will also help give it a little extra shine. This is because it is uh, less porous than regular cardstock. As I'm brushing it on, I like to do in some parts kind of like an X to give that wood-like finish that uh, sometimes you find in wood that has the grains that um, encounter each other. Then just to speed up the drying process, I bring in my heat tool. It makes no difference if you let it dry on its own. Okay, now I bring in my card base, and this card base is five inches by six and a half. So the first thing I do is bring in my coffee paper. This is going to be my first layer. And the way I like to cover my card base is by bringing my first layer and putting my card base on top of this first layer. Then I grab a crafter's knife and I just cut around it, discarding the excess. And this will give me a perfectly fitted first layer for my card. And for my inside piece, I just go ahead and I cut it out of the pattern paper I picked, about a fourth of an inch smaller than my card base. This will allow for a nice frame. Next, for my sentiment, I bring in some black onyx VersaFine ink, and I bring in this wooden stamp. And on some white cardstock, I go ahead and I stamp it, pressing firmly. Bringing in this Fisker's Tag Punch, I go ahead and I center the sentiment, and I punch it out. Now this tag punch has a second feature and that is for you to be able to make holes for this tag. So that's what I do next. Doing both sides, just putting it in the second slot here and punching the holes out. Voila! 
Since this is a tag, I need to bring in some ribbon. But before I do that, I decide to get some eyelets for these holes and just bringing in yellow eyelets, I go ahead and I bring in my crop a dial and I press on these. Crop a dial is a great tool. It allows you to do little finishing touches like these eyelets. Okay, to finish off the tag, I just grab some white polka dotted tan ribbon and I thread it through these eyelets. Okay, I start heating up my glue gun, get it ready. But first I want to distress the second layer. That's the pattern paper. So I just go ahead and I grab a crafter's knife and I go all around the edges. And this is just breaking up the fibers, making the edges look distressed, look used, more vintagey, rustic. You get the feel. <laughs> and don't be afraid to add some little rips, some little torn edges here and there. It just adds to the look. Cut into it. And just to complete this look, I go ahead and I bring in some vintage photo and with a blending tool, I grab a little bit of this ink and I go all around the edges. Again, trying to make this paper look a little more aged, a little more grungy, give it more character. And every now and then I bring in my flower and just look how everything's going to be set up and I decide that I need a leaf. So I was lucky that I also pressed some leaves from this flower. But I feel that this background needs a little something more. It needs a little oomph. So I decide to bring in some texture paste and this brick wall stencil that I had in my stash. Believe it or not, I had never used it. So woohoo, I'll be using it here. And you know, I love using texture paste and I should use it more. I don't use it enough. It gives projects a nice texture, it gives it a different feel, and it definitely adds to projects. And this is by Ranger but there are many different brands of texture paste. I grab a little bit and I bring in the mat where I did the coffee and it still has some coffee on it. So I just bring in some of this paste and I add a little bit of color because I don't want it too white. At least some of the parts, I don't want it too white. I want it a little bit more distressed. So just by grabbing some of this coffee, I go ahead and I tint this texture paste. Keep in mind that texture paste could be uh, colored with uh, many different mediums. You could use uh, uh, alcohol markers, you could use distress inks, you could use watercolor markers, you could use um, watercolors. You could dye texture paste with pretty much any color you might have, as long as it is liquid. And then I also grab some of this coffee without mixing it in too much into the paste because I want little streaks, I want little blobs of this brown. And I add this look to certain parts of this background. I don't do the whole piece with this bricks, just pieces of it. Like when you see a wall that the paint is chipping in certain parts, and an old wall, um, that's the look that I'm going for here. And I also grab some of the white paste, just plain white, to add some little pops of just clear white. So I want this difference in colors, pops of colors all throughout the background. And I love how this looks. I let this dry overnight so it's completely dry now and you could see the effect that this texture paste gives this piece. I love it, love, love, love. You could see the dimension. Okay, so I am good now to stick this piece onto my wood looking layer. And I use some mixed media glue only because the coffee creates a slick surface. So I want this to stick a little better than if I would be using regular glue. So just by centering it on to my first layer, I go ahead and I add it. So once it is nice and stuck down, I remember my tag. <laughs> I want my tag to be at the bottom of this second layer. So I had to go ahead and try to fix this. And that's just by lifting the edge of this layer and sticking that ribbon in between. Yes, these mistakes are made quite often, but we always find remedy for them and we work through them. So just to help this stick a little tighter, I go ahead and I add some clips after adding the uh, multimedia glue. Just let it sit there for a little bit. Then I bring in the stem for my flower. This is my beautiful sunflower here. 
Now that my glue gun is nice and hot, I add a little bit of the silicone glue onto the card and I stick the stem down first. Then I add a big blob of the silicone glue and I bring in my sunflower and just center it on the stick. And yes, my leaf, how does this leaf go? My mind was telling me these leaves are kind of sad, they're kind of droopy, and sure enough, looking in, up on Google, I found that these leaves do fall a little bit, so that's exactly the direction that I put the leaf. And I decided to add little blobs of silicone glue to some of the petals just to straighten them out and keep them in place. I also added some silicone glue to the tag just to stabilize it a little bit. And looking at it, if you know me, I have to add corners. I need my corners. So I'm working on some invitations uh, for my daughter's birthday at my mom's house. I decided to take my work there and spend some time with my mom there. But I totally forgot that I need my die cutting machine at home. So I brought in an old diva goodie, my cuddle bug. This uh, die cutting machine was the first one that I owned and it still works fine, but I, I just prefer the electrical one, which is the one that I use normally. And the only bad thing with these machines is that you just have to crank it manually. And I use so much die cutting in my cards that an electrical machine just worked better for me and faster. So here, all you have to do is put in your first base plate and then put your card stock on top of a B plate, place your metal dies facing down, and then place the second B plate on top. So you are creating a sandwich between two B plates. And then you just run it through your die cutting machine and this will give you your die cut. You see me using die cuts all the time in my cards. So here I have to do another modification. These corners have flaps to where you can hug the paper as you're applying these corners. So all I do is I just take some scissors and cut these flaps off. So then I just go ahead and using some glue, I go ahead and I stick these on to each one of the four corners. And I like leaving the corners not stuck down completely. I like for them to have a little bit of lift to them, as you see here, especially in a car like this, that's a little more rustic. And you can see here how my sunflower doesn't have a lot of dimension, but yet it gives a lot of dimension to the card, a lot of realistic look. I just love how this card came out. I am enamored with it. I hope that you really enjoyed this process. And keep in mind that everything that I do on these cards can be taken to something like an art journal, uh, a scrapbook page. Uh, all the techniques that we use in paper crafting are really the same all across the board. I hope that you found inspiration in today's video. I hope you create and be happy. Thank you so very much for joining me. Don't forget to visit the other channels and uh, we will see you next time. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so. Hit the notification bell, like and comment. Thank you so very much for your support and I will see you next time. Bye bye. Oh, duh, this is a block. Can't use my Misty. Duh.